In the closing years of the Sengoku era, Japan was consumed by a perpetual conflict. There's a certain magic that oozes out of a Fantastic From Software game. It is challenging yet rewarding, features an eerie story with complicated side plots and character depth, and most of all, it keeps you guessing as you explore the vast yet frightening world. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice has an abundance of this as I ventured through the great mountains, temples, forests, battlefields, and even hidden chambers of the 16th century Sengoku Japan. Every turn I was met with a great sense of reward as I finally reached a safe haven, conquered a boss that I was stuck on for an hour, or unlocked that one ability which I had my eye on for a little while. Every death meant I was doing something wrong, or I was unprepared for the battle I had reluctantly encountered while venturing through the massively interconnected world. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is one of the most challenging from software games to date, but its layers of complexity add countless ways to tackle a tough spot, and that's what makes it so unique while still keeping true to the elements of that Dark Souls-like experience. Set in 16th century Sengoku Japan, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice kicks off with a bang. You take on the role of Sekiro, the one-armed wolf that obtains his title after losing his arm during a fight while protecting Kuro, the divine heir. Kuro was kidnapped and taken to the top of Ashina Castle, and Sekiro, now with a prosthetic arm in the place of his lost one, sets off to retrieve him at any cost. Throughout his adventures, Sekiro must fight through the relentless bosses, make tough game-breaking decisions, and master various equipment and skills he discovers along the way. But the changes to gameplay and the removal of some of the RPG features keep the game interesting even throughout the hardest of times. Gone is the leveling system. You can no longer increase stats and offer a blood-like substance to a lady to power up. Gone are equipment sets which see you build and master your character's equipment and weapons. Instead, Sekiro's progression takes a backseat to let the great world and gameplay take center stage. Sekiro is armed with his mortal blade, of which is his only weapon. This prosthetic arm, however, is where things get technical. This wooden contraption can be equipped with various weapons and tools that serve you in combat. You obviously need to find them first, which often means climbing a tower to the top of a mountain, fighting a deadly ninja, and claiming the treasure he's guarding. These tools are unique, and every one of them has some importance over the other. The loaded shuriken can, well, shoot out shurikens that damage enemies and one-shot the dog-like creatures. The loaded umbrella is hilariously funny, and it's a metal-looking umbrella that Sekiro can unwrap and hide under. And the loaded spear is, well, it's a spear with some great range attacks. These tools are found and then given to the sculptor at your safe haven, the dilapidated tower, where he equips them onto your arm. You can, however, change them on the go without going back to him. You can also test them out at this nifty combat range, which is just more like one enemy who never dies and loves being sliced apart. The prosthetic tool can also be upgraded using various materials later in the game to enhance their ability and reduce their spirit emblem cost. Sekiro is a deadly machine, but his foes are even deadlier, which is a staple for any From Software game. There's a lot going on around you and Sekiro's freedom of exploration adds a breath of fresh air to the hardcore RPG experience. Using his grappling hook, Sekiro can leap up to buildings, jump across gaps and reach some tough spots that are most likely guarded by a boss with treasure to claim if you can overcome the challenge. The exploration is not perfect as it requires you to hook onto specific objects when the icon goes green. However, this does not always happen. You can see the icon as you leap towards it, but somehow Sekiro just fails to acknowledge that it's there and you go tumbling to your near death or actual death. The exploration also opens up new opportunities to use the game's stealth system and it is fantastic. Walking along a rooftop that I just grappled to only to leap down and take out the enemy below never gets old. Being on top of things means you can also scout ahead to see what danger awaits, but most of all, the sheer level of verticality allows the whole game to feel much bigger with a great sense of freedom and it works brilliantly. You not only look like a true ninja leaping around and grappling from tree to tree, but you also feel like one and this is a great use of the system that is truly exceptional. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice not only reworked its exploration, but the combat is as new and refined as ever. Somehow, the masterminds at From Software managed to implement a completely new combat system into a game that make it feel like a Dark Souls experience all at the same time. Using his blade, tools and items, Sekiro needs to overcome the many challenges that are thrown at him throughout the game and when I say challenges, I really mean it. Just like Dark Souls before this, this is no walk in the park, but every challenge was met with a frustrating grin on my face. Gone is the stamina bar that we all relied on in Dark Souls, and instead the posture bar is the key to survival in Sekiro. This bar fills up as you fight in combat, but only when you get hit or successfully parry an attack. Every enemy also has a bar that makes things fair. 
Once the bar hits max, the enemy will be staggered, allowing you to deal a death blow. These death blows instantly kill an enemy or take away one of their health bars, but the same can happen to you. What this means is that combat is an intense matchup of trying to stagger your foe, preventing being staggered yourself, and perfecting your parries, which relies on you pressing the block button at just the right time. Basic enemies can be parried twice before being staggered and killed, while boss fights are longer, sweaty, and much more layered due to their unblockable perilous attacks. Sekiro can also unlock skills to help counter specific abilities such as thrust attacks, which come in handy when you're fighting anybody with a spear. Of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, as this game is meant to be hard. Various enemies require a decent amount of understanding in regards to their attacks and skills. You then have to juggle multiple at a time while trying to stay alive, stagger your opponent and make sure you don't fall off a ledge. It is very unforgiving but I loved every second of it. It would not be a From Software game without these heartbreaking moments and Sekiro has plenty of them. There was just nothing worse than being free shot from a distant enemy with a rifle while you tried to fend off a wolf that was trying to eat your face. Sekiro has a less focused boss fight system. There are actually a lot of bosses scattered around the game, but most of the time you'll be facing off against these mini bosses that have two or three bars of health. Stagger them and they lose one bar, but you can also try and sneak up and deal a stealth blow instantly taking away one of the bars of health too. There's a lot of freedom here and you can take on any challenge the way you want to. Some bosses even incorporate the grappling hook which you can use to get around the arena or even pull yourself closer to the boss to deal damage. The real tactics come from the items that you use to complement the tools you have equipped. Cover the boss in oil and set him on fire with your flame tool or use an ungo sugar item which greatly increases your defense and posture and will let you go to town with your loaded axe while tanking more hits. Every boss and every challenging enemy is a new opportunity to experiment with everything Sekiro has to offer and this is definitely the peak of its combat. Of course, there are boss fights that will be tough and I would know. I left a very early fight for almost the entire game before going back to kill her. If you die and die again, then rather take a new route and come back. Sekiro's death system is more than just dying. When you fall in combat, you can resurrect under certain conditions to instantly go back into the battle. However, this has an impact on the people around you and the chances to be helped with unseen aid. This is a complicated and layered mechanic in the game that instead of losing half your money and a bit of XP, you don't thanks to this unseen aid. The more you resurrect, the sicker people get around you as they are inflicted with a disease called Dragon Rot. Dragon Rot mechanic is just one of the many layers that make up Sekiro's story and characters, and of course you'll have to play the game a couple times to get all four endings. It is a From Software tradition that you get put through the torture a couple times, and we love that experience. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is a phenomenal experience. It lacks a multiplayer aspect which is a bit of a letdown but everything else is simply perfection. It works so well together and it is all delivered in a beautiful package with a refreshing approach to exploration and combat. It is difficult, and I'm not kidding, you will die and die and die and die but it is the great adventuring, vast exploration and tough challenges in between all the dying that makes Sekiro an exceptional game.